Good morning everyone. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe and along with that I also hope that you all are studying well. So today we will be completing our chapter number 2 that is acids, bases and salts of our chemistry portion and so far we have learned about acids, bases and salt and in our last lecture we have read about the different compounds which are made from the salts and the salt which we read in the previous lecture was sodium chloride and the compounds were formed from that was sodium hydroxide, sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium carbonate. So moving ahead with the topic we will be reading about bleaching powder today. So bleaching powder is very common name you would have heard this a lot of time. So its chemical formula is CaOCl2 and its chemical name is calcium oxychloride since uh, uh, this formula suggests here it's calcium ca and o stands for oxy and cl2 chloride so uh, you remember we have done the production of sodium hydroxide in which along with uh, the sodium hydroxide we also obtained a gas which is called as chlorine gas and hydrogen gas so that chlorine gas which is obtained from the uh, manufacturing of sodium hydroxide uh, which was done uh, with the help of sodium chloride solution that is called as brine solution and solution that means the uh, solution of sodium chloride mixed with water so when the sodium hydroxide was obtained from this chloralkali process we have also obtained two different gases that were hydrogen and chlorine so this chlorine uh, that chlorine is used in here to make bleaching powder so <coughs> this is the bleaching powder is a calcium oxychloride the chemical formula is uh, CaOCl2 I haven't written okay I've written here and it is also called as a bleaching powder and it is also called as the chloride of lime okay so the reaction is very simple and easy that is calcium hydroxide is is reacted with chlorine so the chlorine get attaches to this calcium hydroxide and form calcium oxychloride and water is released so it's very simple CaOH whole twice plus Cl2 gives CaOCl2 plus H2O so this is the reaction which is very important you have to learn this along with that we have to learn the uses also so the uses are also given in your book and uh, the one thing is that the, there are some properties of this bleaching powder that this um, also have a very strong smell uh, I have written properties which I will be telling you right now it would be in your book as well so properties are that it has a very strong smell strong smell of chlorine uh, because it is made from the chlorine so it has a strong smell of chlorine and <clears throat> bleaching powder is very very soluble with the cold water and sometimes it is in uh, sometimes it has some insoluble portion in the water because it is also used in the cleaning uh, uh, sanitization so it is also used uh, where there is uh, you know a uh, very very large production of uh, storage of water it is also used in the swimming pool so it was well it is soluble in water but sometimes uh, a very small portion is always left behind um, which is uh, also seen and the next property is that it uh, reacts with dilutes acids and it produces chlorine that means like when we'll react this CaOCl2 which any dilute acid it can be H, uh, H2SO4 in a dilute form or HCl so it will produce calcium sulfate along with that chlorine and water so this chlorine is released so because of this reaction this chlorine when it's obtained it is used as the bleaching uh, agent so bleaching powder when mixed with acids releases chlorine and this chlorine acts as a bleaching agent so we have seen or we have read that bleaching powder is used as bleaching agent but it is not itself used as bleaching agent but it is used the chlorine which is present in the bleaching powder is used as a bleaching agent because uh, this chlorine has an oxidizing property and it's this property of oxidization it makes the colors 
almost colorless like if we are using it in the bleaching industry in uh, decolorizing the cotton or linens or it is also used in the paper industries to bleach the wood pulp because wood pulp is brown in color and the papers are very very bright white so it helps in decolorization of the things like brown color <coughs> sorry like brown color is decolorized into white and it is also used in the bleaching in the washing industries like laundries and all so there are a lot of uses of this bleaching powder so this is one property <coughs> excuse me so this is one property that whenever we mix this caocl2 like bleaching powder with any dilute acids the chlorine gas is produced so there are a lot of uses of the bleaching powder which are mentioned in your book so they are used um, in bleaching cotton and linen and textile industries it is also used to bleach wood pulp uh, in paper factories and it's also used for bleaching wash clothes in laundries it is an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries because chlorine is an oxidizing agent so when it reacts with the acids so chlorine is produced so um, that is how it is acting it acts as an oxidizing agent and somehow sometimes it is also used to store chlorine because we cannot store chlorine it will again mix with something else so we can also um, use mix uh, we can also store the chlorine in the form of bleaching powder so that we can use whenever we <coughs> sorry we have time we want it and it is also used to make drinking water free from germs so these are the uses of bleaching powder and there are a lot of more uses also it is also used to make chloroform it is also used to make a uh, wool unshrinkable uh, the shrinkable the shrinkability of the wool is reduced by using this bleaching powder and it is also used in the dis in as an disinfectant in the drink water supply so there are a lot of uses of bleaching powder so uh, this is with your bleaching powder so next we will be reading about plaster of paris so plaster of paris is also have uh, having a different chemical name so plaster of paris can be also called as pop pop short form of plaster of paris and why is the name given to this plaster of paris because it is produced by a compound which is called as gypsum and gypsum was uh, you know mainly found in paris so <coughs> excuse me please because plaster of paris is uh, produced from gypsum that is why it is called as plaster of paris so the formula is caso4 dot half h2o so you would be wondering about this half h2 that is how come it is half molecule of water so this is how its formula is it is called as calcium sulfate hemihydrate hemi means half means half molecule of water so uh, since it is made from gypsum and this gypsum is having two molecule of water with this so these are basically called as hydrated salts you would be remembering about sodium carbonate decahydrate which was washing soda so in that also i have told you that it's an hydrated salt that means whenever we have any salt which have water of crystallization in their molecules are called as hydrated salts so this is also a hydrated salt but this have only half molecule of water since the half molecule of water it's uh, not possible so that is why here i've written 2 caso4 first i will tell you how it is formed so this gypsum that is caso4 dot 2 h2o is heated so very important to uh, remember the temperature also that is it is heated of to temperature 100 degree c or in kelvin it will be 373 kelvin so when this gypsum is heated to 100 degree c or 373 kelvin so the water this molecule of water breaks down or uh, loses so half one and a half molecule of water will be released and only half molecule of water will be uh, you know remained here it will remain here so it will be caso4 dot half h2o and this is called as plaster of paris and one and a half molecule of water will be released so uh, the thing is that we have to very very be careful in the making of this plaster of paris because the heat is to be very controlled manner because if the temperature will exceed from this 100 degree c this half molecule of water will be 
you know released or it will be dried up and we will just get then CSO4 which is not at all the plaster of Paris or it is called as a dead burn plaster so that is of no use so it is very important to check the temperature here that it should be controlled in a controlled manner that the temperature would be only 100 degrees C not above that and not below that so we should obtain this half molecule of water along with this CSO4 so since it is not possible to have half molecule of water so that is uh, why we use two molecules of the CaSO4 because of this CaSO4 it can share half molecule of water with one CaSO4 and the half with the other so that we can write down a full molecule of water so we will take two two molecules of gypsum that is CSO4.2 H2O and then we will heat it to 100 degree C uh, or 373 Kelvin then we will get two molecules of CSO4 which will share half molecule of water each so there will be one molecule of water I hope you understand this because here one CSO4 is having half molecule of water which makes it plaster of Paris so if we will take 2 CSO4 it will be having one uh, molecule of water because half will this and the half with the other so 2 CSO4 dot H2 can also be the formula of plaster of Paris so in that case 3 H2 will be released since here was 1 H1 uh, and a half H2 so 1 and a half plus 1 and a half will be 3 so we take 2 CSO4 dot 2 H2 that means 2 molecule of gypsum we will heat it to the 100 degree C temperature then we will get 2 molecule of CSO4 dot H2O so both of them are same so what happens when we will mix this with water okay so when this POP will mix with water or same amount of water that is one and a half molecule of water it will again convert into gypsum okay so this is also very important to know so because the pro there are many properties of plaster of paris that pro uh, plaster of paris or pop is white powder and it is uh, very very uh, you know it is very very famous for setting into a hard mass very quickly it's set to a very hard uh, substance when it gets wet with water so that is why it is used in the medical industries also because it sets very quickly so whenever we will add this uh, we will add the water into it it will again form gypsum that is CSO4 dot half H2O plus one and a half molecule of water will form again CSO4 dot 2H2O that means it will again set as a hard mass called as gypsum so it is also used as um, uh, <coughs> sorry um it is also used as the uh, plastering agent so because whenever we will uh, we will uh, when if we'll store this pop in open container and if there is a little moisture in the atmosphere it will set into gypsum so that is why we have to always store it in a moisture proof container so that there would be no water all right so there are many uses of this plaster of paris that means it is uh, one of the important use of the pop is that it is used i haven't written here i'm sorry but it is used uh, in the uh, you know uh, correcting for the broken bones in the hospitals or the fractured bones because um, as soon as it is mixed with the water it sets as a hard mass so it uh, used for the for the uh, plastering the um, fractured bone and it's also used in the dentistries also again it is also used to make toys it is used as uh, to make a uh, fireproofing materials it is used in the chemistry laboratories and all it is also used to make uh, wall ceilings um, for decorative items and there are a lot of uses it is also used to make chalks and all so the uses of pop are also given in your book that is here you can read in your book um, that it is also used in many many production of many many things okay so the last is water of crystallization here in your book is an activity activity number 2.9 heat few crystals of copper sulfate in a dry boiling tube what is the color of the copper sulfate after heating do you notice water droplets in the boiling tube where have these come from add two three drops of water on a sample of copper sulfate obtained after heating so 
if we will take few crystals of copper sulfate since we know that the crystals of copper sulfate are blue in color so when we will heat this copper sulfate crystal they will become white and we will see that some of the water droplets are formed in the test tube that means from the copper sulfate the water is released and it becomes white in color okay that means the water is released and the blue color is no more blue it becomes white so again when we will add few drops of water to this copper sulfate it will again become blue so why is this so because there are some salts which are called as hydrated salts that means these hydrated salts contains water or crystallization so <coughs> excuse me so there are some salts which have uh, water molecules as an essential part of their crystals and when this water molecules is released they become dry on anhydrous salts so the color which was imparted because of the water gets uh, vanished and they become white or colorless so the water molecules from which part of the structure of a crystal of a salt of a crystal or any salt uh, the water molecules which forms part of the structure of a crystal are called as water of crystallization and the salt which contains water of crystallization are called as hydrated salts um, every hybrid salts have a fixed number of molecules of water of crystallization in its formula like <coughs> I'm so very very sorry so here uh, we can see that CuSO4.5H2O this is copper sulfate here it is having five molecules of water that means it is called as copper sulfate pentahydrate so as in the activity we have read if we will heat this uh, then we will get uh, written this reaction if we will heat this then we will get uh, the CuSO4 and the five molecules of water will be re released and it will be called as anhydrous copper sulfate which will be white in color and again if it reversible process and again if we will add five molecules of water to it it will again become hydrated salt again it will be blue in color so this is the hydrated salt and another example of this is Na2CO3.10H2O which is sodium carbonate tetrahydrate. So if we will heat this it will become soda ash and if we will again add water to it it will become a uh, hydrated salt. So the salts which uh, loses their water crystals are called as anhydrous, anhydrous salt. So this completes your chapter. It was an easy chapter. Please read all these uh, compounds like plaster of Paris or POP, um, bleaching powder, baking powder, washing powder and sodium hydroxide. I am just giving common names. You can just uh, read how to uh, form this and what are the uses of these. They are very important part of the chapter and chapter was a little easy I think if you have read it properly. So I will be giving you questions and answers. So I know you do all the time. If you have any problem with the chapter, you can tell me in the WhatsApp group which we have formed so that I can uh, explain you in the next video. Uh, so till then, please do your work and stay safe. Thank you.